Hey Soul Family, welcome back to the channel. This is the White Feather Tarot. And in today's reading, we are doing what does your subconscious mind want to communicate to you? And to do this reading, ah, I feel this one actually. One and two. We're going to be picking three piles together. Ah, there we go. That will be our third pile. So let's see what we have for the reading today. For pile number one, you have ocean tides. For pile number two, <clears throat> you have treachery. And for pile number three, you have rising sun. If you like to pick with crystals, let me add these right now. There we go. So for pile number one, you have the clear quartz. For pile number two, you have the blue appetite. And for pile number three, you have the yellow topaz. And this is what your crystal looks like. All right. So take a look at which one of these three piles or three crystals you're the most drawn to. And that will probably be the pile for you here today. If you feel drawn to more than one pile or maybe all of the piles, as I always say, trust your intuition. It is your magic that guides you and leads you to the right readings. So perhaps there are more important information that will be revealed from your subconscious mind in today's reading. And so let it guide the way. And as usual, you'll find the timestamps down in the description box. Click on your times and I'll see you in your readings. Hi, pile number one, welcome to your reading. You have chosen the beautiful clear quartz as well as the moon, ocean tides. Uh, let's keep your crystal here. It says individuality, strength, and formlessness. Such a beautiful card, but also one that displays a lot of power. I see power that doesn't have a specific form. Let's find out more together uh, on what your message is from your subconscious mind. What does it want to communicate to you today? So these are the Oracle decks that we will be using. And these are the two tarot decks that we will be using for your reading today. Oh, thanks a lot. So that's the first card. And we kindly want to know what does your subconscious mind want to communicate to you today? Two cards. Let's take your tea leaves, run them down, and then pick one. I actually think this is the other one. Two. Ah, these are three cards. Okay. Right. And now let's pick up your tarot cards and ask, what does your subconscious mind want to communicate to you today. Thank you. All right. Let's pick up the last deck. What does your subconscious mind want to communicate to you today? What does your subconscious mind, ah, I feel this one, want to communicate to you today? 
Okay, so let's now pick up your cards. You have a ah, child eternal. So the light attributes are determination to remain young in body, mind and spirit, ability to see things with fresh eyes. Now, um, your, the shadow attributes to this card uh, is inability to grow up and be responsible, extreme dependency on others for physical security. Right. So let's see how this card fits into your reading. It depends on how they're going to line up together. Let's take a look at the rest of your oracle cards. Ooh, so you have the hawk and thistle with graceful persistence. Lovely. Mm. You have the duck and chrysanthemum with luck. Beautiful. You have bouquet, compliments from an admirer. Ooh, love that. You have, how about we move this down a little bit so we have space for your uh, tea leaves. You have dark men, dealings or relationship with a man with dark complexion or hair. Uh, yeah. And the last tea leaf, we can add it right there. So you have kangaroo. Unsettled times need to plan ahead. Actually, the kangaroo with the little baby here is telling me a lot because it's going along with your reading. Right, so let's take a look at your tarot cards. What do you have, my dear pile uh, number one? So, first and foremost, you have the high priestess. You have the fool. Hmm. Wow, three major arcana so far. Isn't that cool? You have the Wheel of Fortune. Ah. You have the Empress, four major arcana. Wow. <laughs> so this is a major message. In fact, five major arcana from this deck. This is not a joke. You have the um, Judgment card. Mm. All right. You also have the Seven of Pentacles, the Empress again, that's definitely a confirmation. You have the King of Pentacles, and look at that King of Pentacles, literally on top of the world. <laughs> okay, you have the Ace of Swords, the Hermit. Like, how many major arcana so far? Five, six, seven out of all of the tarot cards that we're seeing for you. All right. You have the Ten of Wands and the Five of Swords. Winning over something that used to defeat you. Uh, uh, this is a very cool reading. Definitely a major message here from your subconscious mind about a specific situation that you could have been struggling with and it's been defeating you for a while. Okay, so that specific situation, see with the one that we see in the Five of Swords, as well as the Wheel of Fortune, I see that you are blessed with something that should have been making you very fortunate. Um, it's something that you should have been enjoying with the Empress coming twice. It should have been something that takes great care of you, but due to, with the Ace of Swords here, I feel like something hits you, especially that there are a lot of needles attacking this figure in the, in, in the Wheel of Fortune. Something hit you hard in your emotions, perhaps, or a specific situation happened in your life that hindered that very fortunate situation from showing up. Let me explain to you, let me give you an example of what this means. Let's say, for example, you are born, um, with above average intelligence in solving maths, for example, like you are, you would have been the next prodigy, uh, of 
a, being a great scientist. You know how when we sometimes watch little children, I I've recently saw something like that. He's very popular. A child who became like a professor at a university in physics or something like that. Very, very smart kid. So I see here you were born with something very fortunate, but maybe let's say, for example, if things hadn't gone down normally, just like the kid who became a professor and was discovered for, for his mental capability, cap capabilities and geniosity, imagine such a prodigy. Uh, perhaps the parents weren't able to take him to school or maybe he had to go through a certain illness or something that hindered the, reg the regular growth of this child receiving all this recognition and even contributing greatly to the world. And, and so one day this child heals and then they, they can now begin their journey of manifesting the great benefits that they were born with. So to me, I see your subconscious mind telling you you were born very for, for, fortunate in one area that's very natural to you, but perhaps something killed it or it didn't kill it forever. It's some, something hurt it. A specific situation hurt it uh, at some point of your life. And uh, it made you depend on others or it made you um, lose your, or at least you think, it made you think you didn't have that type of blessings. It made you uh, think that maybe other people were lucky. Although here with the luck card, you are totally lucky of having that benefit growing up. These could be many things, certain intelligence in an area, um, or great looks, or um, untapped skill, a, a specific personality trait. Maybe you were born to be very charismatic, but due to some pains that beautiful personality is not out. Uh, you were born business savvy, someone who's capable of building empires, but you had to maybe take care with the empress, nurture someone else that took time from you growing, something like that. There is a strong here message from your subconscious mind about what you were naturally born to do and how these times are now over and that it's time for you to take yourself or to tap into that energy, to make use of that benefit. Really with the Empress coming in twice, for a lot of you, this could be um, um, great looks, Venus energy, great looks. Here with the King of Pentacles and the Seven of Pentacles, your capabilities of building something admirable, building a great career and being very lucky at going after and uh, what you want, being smart, financially smart, um, overall, I do see with the Five of Swords here that in comparison to other people, you are a winner. Although you have lived your life in the opposite energy, uh, feeling like you weren't, you were the one who was losing. And isn't it crazy to think that someone who's so fortunate like you is living the opposite life? And perhaps this is why there is a great interruption from your subconscious mind. See, dark man with bouquet, I feel like your subconscious mind is telling you um, with its vast and great capabilities of being aware of your outside world more than your conscious mind, because, you know, subconscious mind is able to pick up on more vibes and uh, understanding of the outside world, where sometimes the conscious mind interrupts these ideas and shifts these ideas. So I see your subconscious mind uh, not shift these ideas, like um, reframe these ideas into the negative. So I see your subconscious mind with the dark man and bouquet. This represents people to me, especially that this has compliments from an admirer. 
I see your subconscious mind telling you, you have a lot of strength to you and people really admire you. You're not seeing that, my dear pile number one, at all. You get a lot of stares and admiration from the people around you in the very same area that you are afraid of and perhaps even um, putting too much focus to see as a negative or see as something that ekes you, you know? Because when we see insects, we naturally go, oh, <laughs> right? So here the Empress is um, very focused on the little things. And these little things could be the very things that may be hindering you from seeing what actually other people, the way other people see you or the re your real you, how you're perceived in the outside world. See, getting into detail about maybe criticizing yourself could be in this area. It doesn't mean that you criticize yourself in all areas of your, of your life, but you're criticizing yourself in the very area where you're blessed, making it hard for the cycle of life to move, for energy to move, and for you to make use of the very blessing that you were lucky to be born with. And so, with the judgment card, I see that you're keeping yourself stuck. You're supposed to blossom like uh, everyone else who's made it, but you're, you're a flower that is trapped and trapped by the little ideas that are stopping this wheel of fortune from moving, stopping the energy of fortunate, uh, fortunate energy in moving to your favor, uh, pile number one. And I see your advice from your subconscious mind is exactly that. Determination to remain young in body, mind and spirit. Ability to see things with fresh eyes. To open up your eyes to what you're not seeing. You could be afraid of scenarios that will never happen. And even if they do, they are much smaller and tinier as a consequence than how you could be magnifying it, uh, my dear pile number one. A child approaches life more positively. They are more hopeful that things will work out great for them. And so your subconscious mind is saying in order to get out of this, Realize that things will be working out great for you. That's the first thing. Second of all, this, the biggest realization that it wants you to see that even if things don't work out, it's a small thing. It's too small to worry about. Realize that it's not such a big deal after all. It's a tiny loss in comparison to the great advantages that you can be getting. Do things sometimes go wrong? Yeah, they do. But if they're going to go right for you, most of the time, nine out of 10 of the times, then it really is worth losing that one time, uh, my dear pile number one. And even when you do, you'll realize it was much tinier than you thought. And it will give you clarity with the Ace of Swords. Only when you put yourself out into the field and try, will you Will you make the mistakes that will first show you wasn't as big as you thought it was in your mind? Sometimes our minds magnifies things. Second of all, you will gain clarity in a much easier way to understand how it's done better. So for the next time, you grow with the hermit card here. See, with the phases of the moon, I really do see that as you try... You grow just like the phases of the moon. You go through a cycle, a natural cycle that everyone has to go through anyway. 
and you get to see the positives of the, of these cycles you know just like the waning and the waxing there are some times where it doesn't go exactly as you want and there are other times where it goes great and you get so much benefit from it and even when it's time when these times that things don't work out they are great because remember during the darkest night that we see the stars and the moon with more clarity and this means we get better guidance we understand things way better than other people and so throughout all of the things that you've been through you've gained so much learning that you may not even be aware of and that's why you have the high priestess with an uphill going upwards you've learned so much you your brain has picked up so much especially that it's coming in conjunction with the seven of pentacles day after day month after month year after year you've picked up so much that you don't even know and that's how the subconscious mind works i'm not surprised you have that because like anything you learn in the world, driving a car, learning a new language, you name it. In the beginning, it feels like there's so much to pick up and that it may be impossible to learn. And then all of a sudden, it just works out. You find yourself driving that car or speaking that language or doing that new skill that was so difficult in the beginning to learn. And so graceful persistence actually here shows me it doesn't show me that your subconscious mind is trying to tell you that you need more work actually your subconscious mind here is telling you you've reached great maturity and if you begin anew with the full card give yourself another chance you'll see that you will enjoy this trip or this journey in a much different way this time than you ever have you will find yourself to be on the top of the world because with the king of pentacles, that's the end of a long journey. You're finally reaping the results. You've done so much. And, um, you know, I've once read that the, the tides or the waves of the sea, they can go as high as skyscrapers. Look at that. This person is... Uh, in a skyscraper that's high and just as the tides one day were so high you've learned so much from these experiences especially that you may have been putting a lot of effort to healing your inner child um recently especially with inner child appearing twice looks like this person's inner child and so now with the with the arrow going upwards you're going to go as high as a, a skyscraper as high as the tides mm, because you were one of the lucky ones to experience these tough things that made you who you are today way above the average person not to mention that you were already born lucky with specific advantages to you these could be looks, these could be intelligence, these could be an amazing character, whatever it is. It's in the area where you feel like you're losing when you should have been the one winning, my dear pile uh, number one. And I see here with the Ten of Wands, there's only a little bit left to go. You've done all the hard work. I think only a little bit of endurance is to, it has to do with trusting yourself to maybe with a door, to go out there if you want to open up your private business or to pursue or embark on a new journey it's about time you begin it's if it's about your looks then you've done so much um, it's about time you trust in yourself maybe you're seeing yourself in a far different light than how people are actually seeing you you know this here could explain with a magnifying glass that you see little things here and there that you could have been magnifying about how you look when really people's reaction to how you look is absolutely very different so it's just the last few steps of believing in yourself believing in the journey putting yourself out there to see the results of what you have been working towards so open up that door to yourself 
my dear pile number one, is your message from your subconscious mind. Begin and you trust the process. Just go out there, embark on this journey, begin, and you will see that you're going to see things far different than what you think you're seeing. And this way, it seems you liberate yourself from maybe depending on others for one thing or the other. And finally, being feeling full and whole on your own. And this is exactly what I see uh, for your reading, my dear pile number one, as your biggest message that your subconscious mind wanted to communicate to you today. And if you've enjoyed your reading, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. And please don't forget to check out my two productivity books, the Productivity Handbook and the Productivity Cookbook. The handbook teaches you how to become a productive person right away, all while enjoying the journey. It's full of techniques that could really make this journey enjoyable and open up your mind to how to approach any task that could be intimidating and this way you achieve your goals and your dreams and the productivity e-cookbook has 210 recipes of healthy and delicious meals that are cooked in a matter of minutes giving you the rest of the day to do what is important for you i've partnered with a nutritionist to bring this e-cookbook out to you there's also a vegan version and if you're interested in checking any of these out you'll find links to them down in the description box and my dear pile number one, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm wishing you the best of luck and I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye. Hi, pile number two. Welcome to your reading. You have chosen the beautiful blue appetite as well as treachery. So we have on this card... Uh, betrayal, mistrust, and deception. Let's see what's going on here and what does your subconscious mind want to relate to you today. Um, we'll be using these oracle decks and these two tarot cards. Let's get straight into it. Right, so I feel like this is your card as well as this one. Okay, Ooh, looks like this is your card. And how about the tea leaves? If we push them... We get two, right. Okay, so these are your oracle decks. Looks like this one fell as well. We'll be taking it. Now, let's check out your tarot decks. So, ooh. <laughs> so you have three already. What does your subconscious mind want to communicate to you today? What does your subconscious mind, I'm sure these are two, want to communicate to you today? Right. So we have our cards for today's reading. Let's put the tarot cards together for now. And let's check out your oracle cards. So, ah, you have visionary, right? So you have visionary. The light attributes are capacity to envision what is not yet conceivable to others. Willingness to proclaim a vision without uh, regard for personal gain. The shadow attributes are selling insights to the highest bidder. A com compromising your vision to make it more acceptable hmm. okay you also have child divine the light attributes are innocence purity and redemption you also have suggests a special connection with the divine the shadow attributes are an inability to defend oneself against negative forces oh my god okay and you have the hound and pair with loyalty. So this tells me right off the bat here, my dear pal number two, your subconscious mind has a strong message to you that you're someone who has a great capability to pick up 
that something is wrong. But it seems like maybe in, in some area of your life, you may have been wanting to maybe please someone or you want your your you maybe wanted to to please a certain area of your life or a heart wish a wish that you have and to fulfill it you may have been ignoring the red flags and i see that your subconscious mind is really telling you in order to stay loyal to something to your wish or to another person or something you're really betraying the the signs that you've been seeing the the what your intuition has been telling you or although you're a great visionary you're someone who's able to pick up on the wrong signs um in order to stay loyal to something else you have bis been disregarding this intuition that your subconscious mind has been sending you to tell you that something is wrong and you you could be loyal to something that may betray you later and so when you do that, you open up your trust too much where you could be hit by a negative force later on. Mm. I feel like maybe there is someone who is dishonest maybe in your life. Perhaps you have axe, forces working against you. Feather, someone you know is unindependable, un Independable and insincere, and you have lion time to act. Wow, wow, that's a strong message, my dear. Pile number two, you're really getting a warning here a big warning from your subconscious mind that something is working against you, and, and you better act now is what your subconscious mind is telling you. Please act now. Mistrust shows me don't trust something. You know what? Maybe this could be talking about as well. It may not be a certain person, but it may be talking about you uh, thinking that everything will be okay without taking action, especially that you have time to act. And your subconscious mind is telling you, no, no, you're opening up your yourself to something that could be wrong and dangerous you know opening up your heart and your chest to something that an idea that may not be right you feel that this doesn't look right so do the right thing and cut out uh, i don't want to say aggressively but cut out irreversibly either an idea or a person or something that you wish would go right, but you have a feeling that it may not be right. Look, this whole reading is about, especially with feathers, because feathers are messages. And so I really fear, feel that your subconscious mind is telling you, I've been sending you warning messages, uh, perhaps in the form of intuition and vision, maybe even dreams. So if you feel that someone is not right or someone is not being honest, if you feel like something you're doing is not right, it's time to take action now. This reading is not to make you worried about something that you have no emotions towards. This reading is to tell you about a feeling that you have wrong. And if you have, if you have a weird feeling about something, act on it now and cut it off from your life. Okay, so let's explore more on what your subconscious mind is trying to tell you. So, ooh, same as pile number one, you have the Wheel of Fortune. I feel like if you trust it, it may hinder you from moving. You have the King of Pentacles moving and getting uh, good results or something. King of Pentacles, I'm seeing release your power here. Like be bold, yeah. Be, don't be afraid to be bold. That's why you have the line here as well with time to act. So you have the chariot again, time to move. Wow, time to move. I'm seeing something as well, pile uh, number one. For some of you, 
because this circle looks like an egg, right? Or ovaries. And with child here, the chariot has a child. I think if you wanted to have a child, time to act now. Maybe this is talking about saving an egg or something before it's too late. That's very, very, very specific. But I just thought I'd show you here what I'm seeing. So other than that, you have the chariot. You have the page of swords. You have the six of wands and look, it fell on its face. Like you could be successful or you might not be successful depending on how you're going to view this and how you're going to take action towards it. Mm. So it's like, uh, it depends on what you're going to do. Uh, it, then you will have the results. So this could either go really right for you and you can win if you act now or you may regret it later. It's like cutting something off. Doing something now. It's like your subconscious mind is telling you, don't trust that it's going to be okay if you have an inkling about something. Act now. You have the Eight of Cups. I feel like this reading is meant to empower you, not to make you afraid. Because your subconscious mind is coming at the right time to tell you things can go great for you. But just do it now. Eight of Cups. Hmm. Free something. Maybe free yourself. Seven of Pentacles. Time is running out. What is that? Queen of Swords. I feel this one. Let's take that first. Six of Swords. Walk away. Or make a move. Because if you make the move now, you'll, you'll save yourself from what could have happened. What's going on here? Mm. Wow, four of wands. Right under the six of wands. So celebration. Again, this emphasizes, especially that they're coming in conjunction to each other. This emphasizes that if you do take action, however, you'll be celebrating it and you'll be very happy with the results and proud of yourself. Ooh, look at that. Four of Swords. Time to think and reflect. And you have the Three of Swords. You might regret it later and try to try so hard to fix something that you already have now. Wonderful. Okay, so your subconscious mind is definitely not telling you that you're going to use it. As I explained very well here, is that it's only telling you not to run out of time, which means the time to act is now, obviously. And you want to free something here. What do you want to free? Eight of Cups is usually the card of walking away. But here it's more about freeing something. To free yourself from being stuck later. Or to free yourself from someone or to free yourself from a situation that you feel might imprison you later. Let's explore what all of these are. Queen of Swords shows that you need great planning, great planning and reflection at this time of your life with regards to this situation, because it's a wish that you have, and it could turn out to be a very fortunate one. So it's about how to handle the situation and move forward. See, again, the Page of Swords shows us it's about thinking and planning. And not leaving it to luck. Hmm. Once you think about it, do know that things may break easily and quickly. And so instead of waiting for a connection to break or waiting to take action on something that you have a bad feeling about, don't wait until it, it happens because if you stay restless 
for just a little bit, it may break. And you don't want to reach that stage. You want to take the action now because here's what your subconscious mind uh, is saying. If you, however, take action now and you're very quick with your movement, you not only avoid the things that you may not like, but you'll be very lucky. In fact, it would be very aligned with your wish. So for example, this may actually be like, if this is a person, this may be a good person, but if you don't set your boundaries now, as things are happening in a way that is giving you a bad feeling about it, then um, perhaps setting that type of respect won't happen later on. And even if you've missed the chance, if you're listening to this message now, then this is definitely your message from your subconscious mind that you didn't lose anything yet, but the time is now to act now, to take action, to stop something from happening fearlessly. Be fierce. Say, no, I want it now. Uh, I, I, this needs to happen now because that's only fair for me. Um, if this is with regards to you speaking to your manager, you feel like if you don't act now and speak about your rights and how hard you've worked, if you don't speak about that empty position now, someone's going to take it when it's yours. It's not going to happen, but your subconscious mind is telling you, go take it, it's yours. Be fierce and be bold and talk about it. Mm. Yeah, it's setting that boundary now, whatever it is in the area uh, that you may be worried about or in an area where your mind has been sending you signals. It could be even the universe uh, with the visionary here. The universe, especially yeah, with the feather, may have been sending you these signals as well. And so it's yours for the taking. The message here is go take it for yourself now. Don't waste any more time because it could be, it could break by your surprise or it could pass by by surprise. So don't wait for that to happen. And if you act quickly, you are fortunate and you get the results that you will forever enjoy. Uh, my dear pile number two, this pile is not meant to scare you at all. It's not meant to let you feel that you're supposed to leave someone forever. Or you're, unless you know that this is, this is it. Uh, you're, it's not meant to let you know that you're going to lose anything. Everything is yours. In fact, this your subconscious mind is letting you know this now so that you keep what you are fortunate to take. Uh, and celebrate it. Yeah, both cards are victory and celebration. So it's meant for the taking. Just follow your intuition, follow, follow your gut feeling, and be bold about taking action now so that you're not stuck later. Do you see the sword in the Four of Swords? It's hanging next to this person. It's like, you could be resting, but your card is telling you, get up and take action now. Uh, it's not the time to rest. It's time for action. And the action is waiting for you to take it. Mm. And you're certainly a powerful person. It's not going to go down to you crying about it. Uh, so long as a strong person like you knows that this is the situation. And that's why your subconscious mind is bringing you clarity, it's telling you to trust how you feel. It's there for a reason. Stay true and loyal to yourself. Hmm. Don't trust that it's just gonna work out okay on its own if you feel bad about it. Don't trust that this person will act on their own in the best way possible or that your manager on their own will give you that opportunity. Don't trust that. You have an inkling, talk about it. That's exactly what I see for your reading, my dear pile number two. I truly hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. And please don't forget to check out my productivity books, my dear pile number two, they can truly help you out in your journey of achieving your dreams and becoming productive very easily. The Productivity Handbook teaches you how to become a productive person right away 
all while enjoying this journey. It teaches you how to have a healthy mindset towards productivity uh, with techniques that could change your mind forever, put you in awe and how to handle difficult or challenging or intimidating tasks forever in ways that um, may change your approach to productivity forever. It's the techniques that successful people have been using and it teaches you not to rely too much on motivation because it is a feeling that comes and goes and it, it teaches you not to go through productivity by feeling burnt out and bad because there's so much you can do with the, with this feeling before you let it go. So if you would like to check out this productivity book, it could really help you out. Uh, and it, uh, there's also an audiobook if you love listening to your books. Uh, uh, you'll find a link to this ebook down in the description box. There's also the productivity e-cookbook, which I've partnered with a nutritionist that I really love and believe in to bring out 210 recipes of healthy and delicious meals that are cooked in a matter of minutes, giving you the rest of the day to do what is important for you. Uh, there's also a vegan version. And if not, perhaps you can even make use of both ebooks. There are no duplicates and you'll have a plethora of healthy and delicious meals to choose from, not just for the rest of the year, maybe perhaps for the rest of your life. And if you'd like to check it out, you'll find a link to it down in the description box. And my dear pile number two, wishing you all the best of luck with this situation. May you always be a winner and I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye. Hi, pile number three. Welcome to your reading. You have chosen the beautiful yellow topaz as well as the card, the rising sun. It says hope courage let me adjust that there hope courage optimism so let's see what your subconscious mind wants to tell you with regards to that uh, to do that we're going to be using these cards these are the oracle decks and these are the tarot cards that we will be using wow so that came out straight away okay let's pick up the next deck i feel like this one and this one's popping out, so we'll take them. As for the tea leaves, we can go like this, and we can take this one as well. Oh, even the green one's popping out. We can take that as well. Oh, as, as well as that, right. Okay, now let's pick up your tarot decks and ask. Okay, so another card and ask what does your subconscious mind want to communicate to you today what does your subconscious mind want to tell you today one more card there last deck what does your subconscious mind want to talk to you about today what message does it have for you today what do they want to communicate to you okay so our cards are ready these are your tarot decks let's now check out uh, check out your oracle cards so you have angel so the light attributes are helping those in need with no expectation of return and the shadow attributes are acting innocent or angelic to mislead others falsely claiming to be in touch with angelic guidance hmm. angel and i feel like this card's color is the same color as the lotus that's opening up here so perhaps we're meant to take the word angel into consideration. We'll find out. Uh, let's take a look at the rest of your cards. Ah, so you have the weasel and pine with introspection. Mm. You know, I feel like the weasel stands there and looks ahead and studies the situation before it acts. They look, make plans, and then act. Mm. With the pine, something could be spiky, tricky. Maybe you're treading through 
difficult times or tricky times. Huh. And you have the Martin and Foxglove with mischief. So to tread with intelligence. Let's see. Oh, that could also be to allow the intelligence of your subconscious mind to help you with something. You know, angels are there to help us and guide us. So maybe your subconscious mind is telling you to give it the, to have the open mind, ah, to have the open mindedness, to allow it to be useful for you in terms of intelligence. Let's see why <laughs> you're getting this message. So you have I, psychic ability, trust your intuition. Trust your intuition was a card that came in the second pile. So, okay, right? You have, woo, <laughs> you have wealth. I honestly feel here with wealth that the intelligence that your subconscious mind has can bring you a lot of abundance in the area that maybe you're worried about, especially that there's optimism here. Maybe you lack that optimism, although your subconscious mind can provide it to you, provide something to you. Key, exactly. Successful outcome to your problem. I, I see what's going on here. And you have archway. New opportunities, possibilities, and paths opening Okay, so I can already see what's going on here. I see that your subconscious mind tells you with regards to what you want to achieve, especially that you're going through maybe difficult times, spike, the spikiness of the pine. You know, every step is challenging. I see that you may lose hope or you may feel like you won't come to the other side, that you're not going to be able to achieve the things that you want. And so your subconscious mind is telling you, use optimism because optimism is the key, is the access to you crossing to the other side. Because when you have optimism, you allow the subconscious mind to use the powers that it has, that you, you may not even be aware of at all, to help guide you and move you exactly towards that goal that you want to achieve and it can ha and your subconscious mind is confirming that it it is so powerful it can help you do that very easily maybe you're not aware of it but it can help you do that super easily and it can help you bring something into life because the fox gloves um uh, is a flower that helped hera impregnate flora with the god mars so we see something coming into life birth coming into life you crossing to the other side and your your subconscious mind can truly be your guide to helping you do that if you like just like the car let it be on automatic you turn on the engine and you just let it go uh, you do what you need to do and it's going to work out for you and take you there so yeah I feel like with psychic ability, it's more here in your pile about law of attraction more than it is about trusting your intuition. Although it could be, of course, but I really see the idea of your subconscious mind giving you a strong message to trust it uh, because you will be able to attract everything that you want and more in abundance if you trust that your subconscious mind can do it for you. That comes through hope, being absolutely hopeful that it's going to happen for you. Let's check out the rest of your cards and see more about your story. So you have, wow, it can come literally from nowhere. Uh, I see your subconscious mind telling you the queen of cups. You may be isolated and feeling like how, ooh, whoa, <laughs> did you see the magic here? How can this happen to me? In what way? And just like the card flew out, things can just appear in your life uh, in a way that you wouldn't expect. If you just allow optimism to enter your soul and heart where the hand is pointing. You have the queen again, the queen of wands holding on to that dream. Do you see that? 
holding on to that dream, believing in it and the power of manifestation will attract it to you. Yeah, I feel like this way, when you believe so much and hold the wish so close, just like the figure hugging herself here, so close to you that it means so much, even the hand here, your subconscious mind will be able to bring it for you through maybe the law of attraction, through some intelligent power that you may not be aware of. Although here it's telling you, I have the intelligence to do that for you. Mm. Let me show you the way with the weasel here. Mm. You have the chariot. Well, again, do you see the same figure holding something so dear? Hold on, be optimistic and hold that very wish dear to you. It's going to happen. Don't worry about it. No one can interrupt it and get in, in the way. No difficult situation, nothing that looks challenging can come in between you. All right. You have the Hierophant. Mm -hmm. There is um, your subconscious mind holds so much knowledge. It picked so many things up from your childhood up until you grew. And you may not remember some things your subconscious mind has in store everything. And I see that it has a lot of knowledge to make that happen to you for you more than you even know or believe. Um, you have the five of pentacles. Oh, look at that. So cool. <laughs> you have the two of pentacles, the four of wands. I think this card came up in the four and the three piles. Maybe not in the second. You have the three of swords. And you have the ace of cups. Right. I feel the two of pentacles here is talking about abundance because not only does this figure have just one ice cream cone, it has two and I feel like there's so much to go around. And I see your subconscious mind telling you you're crying maybe over loss or lack. You ha may have decided that something is not going to work or that you're not going to have it way before uh, it can actually happen or not. Early decision. And your subconscious mind, see, on the other hand, is showing you that you're going to be celebrating it, that you can have it, and that this special wish can be committed to you. It's yours for, for the keeping. And although you're doubting it with the Two of Pentacles, there's so much more to go around, and that... Uh, your subconscious mind, like I just mentioned here, with the intelligence, you keep getting that, with its intelligence and uh, knowledge, can see far ahead more than you can see. And that it knows it is super powerful. And really, it's up to you to use that key that you have in your mind to open up this opportunity where you can finally pass to the other way and help it be your guide by simply, really, simply, totally believing in it. Because when you believe in it, you allow access to that power and you allow it to start taking action for you to receive it. Because I see your brain, your subconscious mind is telling you, you may be crying over something, you may be feeling like it's not going to work, you may be putting uh, too much work using your, accessing your conscious mind when really it's done in a much easier way with your subconscious mind. Uh, it has far more knowledge and memory and an outrospect of things that you may not ha have um, direct access to to analyze it in the right way. And so your subconscious mind is telling you, don't let go of this dream. Keep holding on to it. You're not going to lose it. You're not going to lack it. And you don't have to try as hard as you think you are trying. Because as you put in the effort, but believe so much, you're allowing a bigger uh, access. You're allowing access to a bigger form of energy that can help you out in a much easier way. You know, it's like 
trying to clean something so hard uh, using a scrub and you like you're you're using a lot of arm work and you're taking so many hours of your day when a specific product is sold you know and you can just like put a little bit of it and it comes out instantly so your subconscious mind is saying it's great to put that work but why take the hard road when I can do it for you in a very easy way. It will almost seem like magic with the scepter here. Mm. Hold on to that dream is the key. To believe so much and be optimistic by holding on to that dream and knowing it's going to happen for you. It's to have that ultimate knowing that it's that is going to happen for you. That is the key to opening up you receiving uh, this wish in a much easier way, an unexpected way than you ever would think. And so, although it looks difficult now, and also, although it's spiky, it could hurt, it could seem like, oh, that hurts, I don't know how to do it. But how, how can I do it? Maybe I've lost it. Maybe I'm not going to be able to do it. Maybe it's just not mine. All these ideas are, uh, you are guided to let them out. And instead of feeling that type of frustration, um, open up the key to bigger power that can help you with it. You know, when you don't know how to do something, if you don't understand, for example, accounting, then it is time to hire an accountant to do it for you. Uh, if you don't know, it's like to access or to Google it or to access the right information and not try to figure something yourself, reinvent the wheel when you have access to a higher power. That's exactly what I see. Uh, my dear pile number three, to have hope, to never let it go. It's supposed to happen for you. <laughs> so allow this powerful access to help you. And the key here is to have optimism and hope and absolute belief to hold on to that wish like you have it in, in your arms now. That's exactly what I see for you, my dear pile number three, in terms of what your subconscious mind wants to deliver to you today. And if you've enjoyed this reading, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. And please don't forget to check out my two productivity books, my dear pile number three, they can truly help you out in your journey of manifesting and making your dreams come true and becoming a productive person. Because really the productivity handbook teaches you how to approach productivity in a healthy way. It's supposed to be fun. It's not supposed to be difficult. And it's full of techniques that can help you feel super confident about tackling productivity forever and enjoying the process. And if you would like to check it out, you'll find the link to this ebook down in the description box. There's also an audiobook if you love listening to your books. And while you're there, you might also want to check out the Productivity e-cookbook. This book was done with so much love to help you in the productivity journey. It's like a sister book. I've partnered with um, nutritionists that I really love to bring out for you 210 recipes of healthy and delicious meals that are cooked in a matter of minutes, giving you the rest of the day to do what is important for you. There's also a vegan version. If you're vegan, if not, perhaps you can even make use of both ebooks because there are no duplicates and you'll have a plethora of healthy and delicious meals to choose from, not just for the rest of the year, but perhaps for the rest of your life. And if you're interested in checking it out, you'll find the link to this ebook down in the description box. And my dear pile number three, I'm wishing you the best of luck. Thank you for tuning in. Your subconscious mind is telling you it's going to happen. So let it do its magic. And my dear pile number three, I'll catch you in the next reading.